Welcome to ArtSpace, City 4 TV's window on the art scene in the White Mountains of Arizona and all around the Southwest, actually. I'm Steve Taylor, and this is my co-host, Lisa Jane. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing? Hi, Steve. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Spring is here. Yes. Isn't it great? With a vengeance. You bet. <laughs> We're happy to have John Vasquez with us today. John, welcome. Thank you. You bet. Well, been looking at your artwork that's all around us, different things, different different mediums. What first got you started with art, John? Uh, I, um, it, for me, it was an escape. When I was a little kid, uh -huh. uh, I, I, I would draw and paint uh, just to have something to, well, I, I grew up in a violent home and, uh, mm. and uh, there was a lot of alcoholism and violence. Oh and so for me, it was an escape. Yeah. And um, that's where it came from. And, uh, and then I stopped for 25 years. <laughs> Life gets in the way sometimes. It does, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's how it started. I see. Uh, as a child, I, I would just draw for hours. Were you able to take any classes while you were in maybe elementary school? Just high, high school, high, high school, school art. Mm -hmm. art. And that was the extent of it for, um, yeah, that was it. So what got you back into it? Uh, I always wanted to, and, and um, there was always a, um, like a, a yearning to start, but like you said, uh, you know, work and children and life and and so you know this is my kids are older now now they don't want to hang out with dad so <laughs> you know so now it's uh, I have more free time and so um, that was a perfect opportunity for me to get back into it and and that's why I went to uh, the college uh, Northern Pioneer College in my town in Winslow. And um, took some art classes there. This is my uh, third semester. Nice. Very good. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so was that the three semesters ago? Was that the first time you had that done was any that, art in That the was the first years? art I've had since high school. So wow. It was awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's inspiring, actually. I see you're yeah. taking classes with one of my friends, Peterson Yazi, up there. Yeah. He's yeah, a great I'm, artist. Yeah, I'm very privileged, I think, because he's doing what I want to do at yeah. one point in my life, um, be a working artist. So yeah. that's my goal. Well, you have a great mentor then. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your work. You have a lot of it and, and it's beautiful. Can, can we start actually with my favorite? Sure. I mean, let's talk about this piece. Okay. Okay. You work mainly what? With the acrylic? Um, actually, I'm trying to find a medium because okay. this is watercolor. Okay. Okay. And um, this was my second watercolor. Does this have a name? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I just, I hadn't had time to mat it. but. Um, uh, this I did this as a project in in the uh, art class, and um, what got me going on it? It was a black and white photo, and uh, I put the color to it, and just the expression. And, and um, what drives me is emotion. Mm -hmm. So I like finding um, you know something that makes me feel some you know something, whether I can yeah. explain it or not, and then try to make it into a painting. So it was a photo that you saw and just inspired you. Yes. You wanted to recreate that. Mm -hmm. I see the tears beautiful. in the eyes. And right. it just, uh, um, I carry my water level a little high anyway, John. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of gives me that feeling as well to see the yeah. emotion there. Well, like I said, my first, um, my first, uh, re the re well, the reason I started art was to, you know, escape that. Yeah. And yeah. so um, for me, this, kind of like represents the child of, of my youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it reflects that. It's, it has a very emotive response when, when people look at it. So that's what I was hoping you know, that's, for. It's yeah. great. Um, so let's go on a lighter note. So what is this very bright picture over here? Um, what is this, that? This is actually, because um, you were talking about going into Stanfield when you were. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, when I was a child, I worked in the fields. Yep. You know, my parents were migrant workers. Mm -hmm. And th this is actually, um, a wish. Um, when I was um, about 10 or 11 working in the fields, I used to think that when I saw Dust Devil, I could make a wish on it. Oh, okay. And that's what this is. This is um, uh, life in the fields and, um, and making a wish for a better life. That's what it is. I like it. I do. Very nice. Thank you. It's not a very lighter note, but... Well, I mean, you know, in a way, the colors are lighter and it's brighter and the hope is reflected in the color. There's, there's and a so, yeah, you know, you've got, you've got reality there, but you've also got that brightness. So I, I like that picture. I do very much. 
Thanks. Uh, this one here is just for study, and uh, it's um, oil pastel. This is oil pastel. I see. The okay, seascape. I was wondering what the medium was on that. that. Uh, oil, oil pastel. pastel. Okay. Yeah, um, and I did that in high school, so I was wanting to try it again, and it worked out pretty good. I liked it. So, since you're trying different mediums, which one have you? Do you think you're going to be gravitating towards, is, or do you just like them all? I like. Um, I like. Uh, I like. Them all. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's I like hard art. to pick. Yes. Um, watercolor. You can make really soft images with watercolor. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. And I, I'm not. I don't know if I'm. Um, I can do that with oil paint. I don't know enough about it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'd have to use a thinner to uh, get your oil down to where you can uh, um, get it softened a little bit. That's part of getting to know the medium. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's talk about this one back here. Yeah, that I'm has curious. a futuristic look You said, you said it has an interesting there. story. Okay, I want to well, know. Um, I was on vacation in San Francisco with my family two years ago, and I saw a homeless man. And, oh, okay. Um, uh, I was uh, eating in a restaurant, and he was outside the window, and there was a huge window, and the man was disturbed, and he was walking back and forth in front of the window and um, oblivious to everything. And so... It kind of haunted me when I when I left the restaurant. Um, what 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 kind of life does this guy see? He yeah. he obviously sees two realities. He was talking to two, maybe two other people that were not there, and so I wanted to show our reality at the bottom and the reality that he might see at the top, mm -hmm. and and kind of um, ex, you know depict what what his life might be like. Oh, I like that. Yeah, Thank you. me too. Now, as a writer. I love pieces like that, especially after you explain it, because mm. I go, oh, we could just write a whole book about that. I, I, that yeah. is a whole story. <laughs> Initially, right there, that right? was a writing. I, 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 oh, I, nice. It bothered me so much that I went back to the room and I, and I couldn't sleep. And so I just had a piece of paper and I started writing what I was feeling. And this, this right here was the, um, the, the impetus or the reason why I started art again, because I, I couldn't get rid of this feeling that I had inside of me until I painted it. Mm -hmm. I wrote it and it wasn't enough, so I had yeah. to paint it. Means of expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I still have it. I still have the writing that goes with it. And yeah. it's, it's a nice. And this was just a picture I took when I was on vacation as well. And I put an abstract background behind it. And I call it the dancers, but. They are dancing. I'll tell you mm. what, that, they are alive in motion. I, you can just see them moving. The colors are wonderful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Um, this here is a char uh, charcoal and pastel, okay. and that was just a study I did, and I wanted to see what the two mediums would look like together, because like I said, I'm trying to find a medium that I like to work in, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to use different my medium, so I don't have a medium right now yeah. that I like specifically to work in. And so you enjoyed the charcoal? I, this I mean, was, the, the tiger over there was my first charcoal, and I loved it, and so I wanted to try something different, but I added oil pastel to it, so... That was the first, my first attempt with charcoal. Wow. Awesome. That, that is Thank impressive. You. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything that you've done with any of them, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm thinking maybe your medium is charcoal, John. <laughs> Thank <laughs> that you. That is exceptional. Thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, you bet. So, so let's, let's talk about yeah, a couple more of these here? in here. I don't know. We've yeah. got about five minutes, horses. so what do we have time to talk about? Yeah, let's do oh, that. Okay, this, is, this was my first um, watercolor. I, this is actually a watercolor. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I, I, I wanted to eventually work into abstract, and so I wanted to paint the horses some, like, somewhat realistically mm -hmm. and then with an abstract background. Yeah. But, and, and try it with watercolor because I had never attempted it before. So you're saying this is an experiment? Oops. This is an experiment. Is this yep. is a total experiment <laughs> in watercolor. And, and it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And Thanks. so, w what is the what is the shiny there? Is that also watercolor? I mean, it, this you know? is all watercolor. Oh, okay. And, um, the, the, I don't know why it looks like that. I, I'm, I'm too new to the medium to tell you why. <laughs> well, and there are several kinds of watercolors. You've got your transparent, you've got gouache, which is a, a dense, more opaque watercolor. I think that's my, my, maybe what I tried on over the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. It was fun. Oh, yeah. All right, let's. 
Oh yes, let's do this one. <laughs> That's a seascape in, that. in uh, oil pastel. Uh, I, I really enjoy oil pastel. Um, I've never tried it. It uh, sure looks beautiful. Thank you. You have to give that a try. You can uh, use it almost like paint with a thinner uh -huh. and brush it on. It's, it has a really nice um, you know, effect. Yeah. And was this inspired f from just the emotion. I mean, did you see a picture, or you just made this? this I, 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 I saw a picture, saying? and I made the colors different. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, just whatever it, it, the emotion hits me uh, mm -hmm. when I look at a, a paint picture, and whether I can express it or not, I, I feel like I should try to, to um, copy it or you know, represent it. Now, do you draw? Do you draw first before you paint, or are you do you just paint? Um, How I, is that? I I do an underneath drawing, a light drawing, mm -hmm. and it usually um, just just to where I could start to see where, where what things are going to lay out, mm -hmm. and then I, I go ahead and fill it in with color. Just to get your basic composition first of all before yes. you start putting the color in. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Let's see. So you've been working at MPC for three semesters. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your What is your plan? Are you going to do Basically, more work there? Or? I. Well, uh, as long as I can improve, I want to be there. Okay. And um, it's actually like this. Oh, pardon me. No, that was okay. okay. Oh, yeah, drops. they're hanging down. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and this this was my, uh, well, it's like one of my first watercolors, yeah. So. And I, I didn't Beautiful. know how to paint with watercolors, so I tried to make it like acrylic. Mm -hmm. And I was fighting mm -hmm. it the whole time. <laughs> It doesn't look like a watercolor. <laughs> so, do you have the picture here that won the the uh, first place? First place. Th that would be the pigeon man. That's that what one. I called him because okay. the way he walked in front of the window, okay. like a so, pigeon. And that was a, a competition at the college. At the college, and the second, this got second place at, at another competition at the college, the seascape. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. So we're, we're hoping that um, we'll be seeing some of your work maybe at the new Center for the Arts. Um, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I can just see your work fitting in oh, really yeah. well down you there. Bet. Very much. Thank so you. I hope you. I hope you pursue that. Um, and as a you know proponent of the college, I'm, I'm glad to see that somebody is, is really benefiting and growing in their in their pastime and in and, and their art, because um, this is some incredible work you have here. Thank you. Very. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, we want to thank you for being on the show, John. Uh, it's, it's been really uh, inspiring. Oh, thank you. And we hope to see more of your work uh, around the mountain. Sure. And I definitely hope you keep continuing as, uh, um, in your classes and, and in doing this. You know, 25 years is a long time to take off, yeah. but now we got the rest <laughs> of our lives. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All righty. Thank you for joining us. We're going to take a quick break and we are going to be back with artist Mike Day. Welcome back folks. We're glad to have you back with us on Art Space and we've got Mike Day with us right now. Mike, welcome. Thank you. Pleasure. Boy, I'll tell you what, there's some exciting stuff here, <laughs> you know. I am excited to hear about how you make this stuff because well, yeah. it's fascinating. What I want to know is, I mean, obviously you are artistic. Well, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you've created pieces of art. That is even art. Um, did you do art when you were a kid? Were you uh, creative in any way that you can remember? You know, I wasn't. I didn't do anything as far as art. Um, if someone said, hey, you know, you're going to be an artist in 10 years or something like that, I would have, you know, laughed in their face pretty uh -huh. much. Yeah. You know, but um, the thing is, is I got into sheet metal fabrication and uh -huh. that was basically my start dealing with, you know, making boxes and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. So uh, basically it turned into something else. Um, and it took me about 10 years to get where I am now. I see. So, so this, okay. this sheet metal fabrication, was at work? Or yeah, you it was were, for you a were, living, You were yeah. working, mm -hmm. yeah. and then was it just the potential came to you about other things you could be doing with it, or how, how did that evolve? I guess the gears started to turn, mm -hmm. you know, and you have all these ideas and stuff, and, uh, and that's where it came from. I just, you know, sitting there working, doing the nine to five, and certain things started coming. Uh, to me in my head and I just thought you know that'd be really neat if I did this or that so 
I basically uh, replicate things that I see as far as nature and things mm -hmm. like that. So, well, it's art. Thank you. And so, what was the what was the first piece of art you did that when you were thinking, hey, you know, there's more to life than sheet metal? What what what, well, what, what was the first thing you did? I think a set of masks that I did. Uh, they were like the the smile now, cry later, you know, uh, masks that I did. Yeah. And you know, they were nothing. It was just basically uh, a cut out piece, and I just cut it out and I rolled it and I welded some chain to it, and that was it. You know, so um, and. It just evolved, <laughs> so <laughs> definitely. So this, I say it has really yes, evolved. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. So this work is more than—it's more than welding. I mean, you—you. You, what is this process? Could you could you take me through a process? And let, let's go with this. What is well, the process of, of putting this together besides envisioning it to begin with? Uh, really tough. Um, it it took a lot to make this piece right here. Um, I probably got about sixty hours in it. Wow. And. Uh, the sequence I had to do in my head before I could actually start physically doing it. And so it all started with flat sheets. If you can imagine that, everything here was flat at one point. And uh, I took patterns off of a ram head to do this and uh, I started forming it. But what happened was the guy that had the ram head actually wanted it back so I did this all freehand. And I use a lot of rubber hammers and things like that, so I don't, you know, hurt mm -hmm. um, the copper, basically. Um, and all this right here is a whole set of uh, different disciplines than, than something like that back there. Um, and I do all of this. I heat everything up, and that softens everything, and I just form it like that. And you form it with, I mean, what kind of tools you're using? Is it... Um, a lot of uh, rubber okay. tools and wooden mm -hmm. hammers and such like that. Yeah. So it, it's the heating and the, mm -hmm. and the and then the pressing with the rubber mallet or the the wood. You wouldn't want to dent it or scratch it. So uh, yeah, yeah. If, if something like this falls, you know, yeah. it'd be kind of disastrous. So yeah. Um, so are, does your planning process include some drawings in order for you to know what pieces you need, or is this something that you can you just visualize? Um. I pretty much saw it in my head, and then, um, you know, what I did was I actually bought a lobster for this piece here, and I dissected it, the whole thing, mm -hmm. which was kind of a smelly process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I wanted it to be very thorough, and if you actually lift it up and look at the bottom of it. May I? It's got, yeah, it's got everything as far as the feeder uh, arms, um, the tentacles. Oh the grabber, everything. It's got... For the camera. Yep. So I definitely wanted to, to capture the lobster because I like nature, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really kind of my passion. You know, um, for the rose, I just, I just barely did this. This was something I did last weekend. And, uh, you know, my first rose didn't look like that. Um, it wasn't as refined. It didn't have thorns, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I've learned how to manipulate some of the, you know, solder and copper to do what I want it to do um, and still make it look nice because, like I said, it's a whole different process than the, mm -hmm. than the suit of armor behind me. That, you can be angry when you make that, <laughs> you know what I mean? But with this, you definitely have to be in the right mindset, I guess, for any art medium mm -hmm. you know you have to be in the right place and uh, you know and that's when I go and do the art when I feel it that's when I go and do it um, I've got about 80 hours in this and I've got about 60 hours in that and I do it really slow and I try to pace myself and I think that was the hardest thing when I first started was to just slow down and just let it take shape you know slowly so mo most of your process is really in your head? Yes. And then you, you use a physical form of what it is you want to recreate. Right, right. But with these two, I actually couldn't form around it because, you know, a lobster... Oh, because this was on top of the, the ram's head that you had originally when you first started. Right. You were using it as kind of a mold. And all I did was pattern it, and um, the ram got taken away. So gotcha. what I did was I took finished. pictures of it, and I started to form the pieces off the pictures that I took. So this one's freehand, 
And this one to an extent is freehand also because you know, a lobster shell is not going to take much abuse. Um, it's going to crack and split and all that. So what I had to do was, again, I had to slow down and look at it and examine it piece by piece and take it apart piece by piece, number it, and assemble it all back together. Wow. And a lot of it is sequenced too. As far as these horns, they were the hardest thing for me to do because I didn't want any solder to really show in the front. And all of it's done with silver solder here. This is all silver solder work. Um, but I had to actually go through the inside and solder it from the inside in the dark. Hmm. Because the horn's twisting, I had to pretty much get my solder to follow the heat wherever I wanted to solder. So there was a few times where, you know, this could have been across the room pretty much <laughs> because I got to the point where I was just like, you know, I need to figure out a better way to do it, but I figured out that that was pretty much the only way I could do it, so I just stuck with it. So you're, you're fishing in with the solder right through the eyes and up through the um, openings and... Actually, no, I, I actually did the horns um, separate. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Because okay. these are actually separate. You can right. see where it, it ends. Right, um, but then they're attached. And then they're attached, yeah, and that was equally difficult and that's where I did go through the back of the skull. I was thinking so, yeah. But I also enclosed the back of the skull also because I wanted it to be a lot more rigid and because it's copper, you know, strength matters. Mm -hmm. So. Now this piece here won, you said first place? Yeah, the 2012 uh, locally grown. Locally grown. And it was my first piece that I'd ever entered. Mm -hmm. And, and you got first place. And I got first place. Well, that said something right there. Yeah, it is <laughs> BC, definitely Northern Pioneer College. College. Yep. Yep. And it, it it definitely boosted my confidence, and it made me realize that, you know, what I do can actually be seen and actually be favored. Mm -hmm. And and it made me, you know, it made me actually want to build the lobster. And I did enter that in the uh, the last locally grown we just had, and it I took second place. Nice. Very nice. So what, is there something about this that, it, what inspires you to recreate these? I mean, is it just in the moment you just know you've got to recreate it or is there, what, what inspires you there? Um, like I said, I like nature. You know, I like, um, it also matters on the finish of the copper and what it's going to look like and how close I'm going to get it to the original. As far as the lobster, they do have kind of that look after they're cooked. Mm -hmm. um, basically, in these in these dark areas, you know, a lobster is pretty much black, and that was uh, a main lobster, and it was totally black when I got it. It was actually alive when I got it, and when I got done with this, this whole thing was like the blackest black you could see. So I thought about leaving it all black to be original, but I wanted to highlight a lot of the different things, so I did, I did acid wash it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that took it back to its original. And then I took some Brasso and went over it, and that's where you get the turquoise patina look. Yeah. And I thought that that would be, and I actually did see that in my head, see the, different, the two mm -hmm. different styles of what it could be. And I favored this right here. I think you did. Uh, good to do that. It just really brightens it up and uh, it right. uh, certainly captures your your attention. You know, you, you can't help but look at it. Well, well I, I appreciate know. it and that's that's the that's the feedback that I want. Um, yeah. You know, Magna at the Talon Center, she uh, she couldn't believe she was flabbergasted that a lobster actually showed up in the competition yeah. you know so and that's exactly what I want to keep doing you know I don't want to be you know mediocre and just bring in just something mm -hmm. you know and whenever I make something I you know I like to feel it I like to have the the passion and, and I try to put that into the piece now this this guy that's looking over your shoulder yeah. back here uh, what was the motivation to to do a full suit of armor well um, Howard Noble's been guiding me um, doing the armor work and first I started just doing the helmets. Mm -hmm. I've got about probably 10 helmets from different periods oh, I see. and different uh, areas in Europe. 
And uh, I do favor Italian armor, mm -hmm. and that's what is behind me right now. I see. And it's from the 1450s. So it's kind of before the high renaissance, but it's kind of in between the transitional period where everything went from mail to plate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what, what I like about it is it's almost like living art. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, these pieces, they sit there and they, they look nice and everything, but I feel like what, what is also neat about the armor is it, you can actually physically wear it. And it's still a sculpture in my eyes. It's still yeah, a sculpture. Yeah, definitely. So. I was, I was looking at the proportions and the height and so forth. Did you make it to fit you? Yes. Okay. I did. So you use your own body measurements to, uh, um, to build the uh, armor. Right. Yeah, I did have I to make... I noticed the proportions were correct <laughs> uh, as far as what we were trained in art school. Right. And, uh, but you used your own body as the uh, form for that. Yeah, and what I, I did have to make some few alterations because my instructor, it's from his measurements. I see. So we did have to go through and add a little bit because um, he's about the same height as me, mm -hmm. but I'm a little stockier build. I see. So, yeah. So are you currently taking uh, some more classes at the college or? Yeah, I'm in my eighth semester okay. right now. So Good. it's taken me that long. Um, to learn and to produce something like this. Uh, and I think I'm gonna keep going. Oh, definitely, um, Because definitely. there's so much more I wanna do. Um, I'm actually working on another suit of armor right now, and it's from the transitional period, so it's 100 years before this one. Awesome. Mm. Same area in Europe, you know, Italy. And uh, I'm just fascinated with Italian armor. Mm. and I, I really enjoy it. Well, let me tell you, I think I'm fascinated with your work. So yeah. I, I, I'm yeah. very, very glad that you decided to come on the show today. Awesome. And, and I hope that we continue to see your work, and that you keep you know, going to those classes as long mm. as you are getting something from them and, and creating such wonderful pieces. Um, and I'm sure you'll be entering, entering into some more uh, competitions at the college, but I also hope we see your work somewhere around the mountain as well. Yeah, um, I'm actually gonna enter um, like I said, I, I don't like to do the deadline thing. Um, if I miss a deadline, well, so be it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to rush anything. But yeah, this I think the student art show is coming up, and I'm going to enter that. Okay, well, we look forward to seeing you, Mike. And thank you so much for being awesome. with us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us, and we hope you come back and see us next month for two new artists uh, from the White Mountains. Um, Art Space is sponsored by Northeastern Arizona Fine Arts Association and the Arts Alliance of the White Mountains. Thank you.